Well now, it's been a while, hasn't it? Hello, demons, souls. This is where I bore you guys with the details a little bit, but going back to this is kind of interesting. I, I, I like thinking about the history that this particular franchise and even this game in particular have with the history of my channel and everything. So like, way back in like, I want to say, well it was 2009 when this game came out, uh, I finally bought a PlayStation 3 and it was for Demon's Souls and Heavy Rain. I don't know if Heavy Rain was out yet or just announced or something, but I was like, okay, I gotta get a PS3 already because this is apparently hot shit. Uh, I bounced off this game so hard. I, I got... I got past, uh, I did Phalanx Demon and Tower Knight, and Tower Knight was like, oh my god, like a, like, w like, it might have been a, I don't know if it was a weekend or a week, but I remember specifically it being like a multi-day ordeal to defeat this incredibly epic boss, and it's like a level of, level of epic boss takedown that's never been matched in the, in the history of, uh, Souls games for me. Partly because it was like the first real boss I ever took down in a Souls game, because Phalanx is a weird one. Uh, and also because it's such an epic thing with like the ambush and that grinning asshole looking down at you like, I'm gonna get you, here's my tower knight, and then it's like, well, you think that's a problem? Here's the 20 archers that are also here, and you're like, what is this fight? And you're like, not prepared for it at all, because you just started the game, and you're like, don't even know what fights boss fights are gonna look like. Last guy was just a weird blob. Um, so I, I bounced off the game pretty hard. I beat those two bosses. I might have beat a couple of random other bosses in other worlds a little bit, but it was an oppressively difficult game, and it was hard to get for me to go back to it periodically. But then you fast forward to 2011, and uh, I was hanging out with Andrew, and we're starting our Let's Play channel, and we have this genius idea to do it with Dark Souls. Uh, that went horribly. That's that's still all up. People ask about it sometimes. It's all on the sad games, and there's even a link to it in the Dark Souls section on my front page. There's like the Dark Souls on sad games section. That went horribly. But uh, when the series was eventually canceled, I went uh, in my free time. I did finally go and play through and beat Dark Souls, and like, and I, it clicked for me finally. Uh, and so I, I sort of got into Dark Souls in, two, in uh, 2011, but then you fast forward to 2013, and I still haven't played through Demon's Souls, and this will be some deja vu for some of you, because the reason I'm playing this game right now is because they're, th they're closing the servers down. Uh, they're going to be down forever. Uh, all the way back in 2013, though, they were talking about doing it uh, then, too. Let's see, I'm doing Demon Souls servers. Uh, they're shutting down for for good February 28th. I just Googled that real quick to, I guess, so I could tell you guys because some of you were like, Did, might not know this already, and I, I, guess I, should get, I should get that PSA out there real quick. Yeah, servers are closing 20, uh, December 28th. So if you want to get you play Demon Souls again when the online features are functioning, hop in now. Warning, last warning. Uh, if you uh, if you just want to play the game in general, I don't think it matters because the, the game still works offline i believe but all the way back in 2013 there was rumors that they were shutting down demon souls servers i don't know if it was an official announcement or if it was just rumors on the subreddit or something like that but people were freaking out and organizing like an event to like get everyone to play again uh in order to just like you know get a last hurrah for this game and that was that was like five years ago that's weird to think about uh what what, what happened is they, they eventually ended up announcing that they were not shutting down the servers I think what happened is they then announced that they're going to put out the digital version of the game, and so I think the digital version of the game revived activity for the game for a while, uh, and made it so they can get away with keeping them up for longer. I think that's what happened, because I think the digital version came out after this 2013 news and everything. But like this, that's what originally got me to play Demon's Souls again, finally, in 2013. Uh, when I, and uh, I had just had my little spat with Andrew about Outlast, and I had just started my own Let's Play channel, uh, so I could do solo stuff that's not compatible with our little group dynamic and everything. So I was like five episodes into Outlast, I just met Wanderbot and Bird, and I'm playing through Demon's Souls in my free time, and I beat the first two bosses, and I'm wandering around Tower of Latry, and I'm like, you know what? I should record this! And then fast forward... <laughs> fast forward from there, and I played Demon's Souls on the channel, and Dark Souls on the channel, and Dark Souls 2 twice, and Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin twice, and Dark Souls 3 twice, and Bloodborne twice-ish, and 
Lords of the Fallen, and Neo, and Bound by Flame, that probably doesn't really count. Salt and Sanctuary twice, and in co-op again. And I've tutored Andrew through uh, Dark Souls, and all the, like, it's been such a, the, 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 the mass of content for Dark Souls stuff on this channel that has defined part of the identity, even though I haven't pl touched them lately because of Zelda, frankly. Uh... Like this, this is like a big. This game's like a big deal for the channel. It's crazy to be go, to be going back to it and everything. And so, even if you don't care about these details, I like to go into them because it's kind of fun to go back through it and all that. Uh, yeah, part of me has been holding off, possibly because of Zelda, because it's like I'm already playing another Z targeting game all year, so maybe I don't need so much Dark Souls. But also, they they stopped making Dark Souls. That might be part of the reason. They at least stopped for now, so that might be part of the reason why the community and the Patreon supporters went went so heavy on Zelda this year after it did Breath of the Wild was because like this there's like a there's a vacuum of that kind of game type for a bit, and so like they probably might be filling that gap with that for a bit. But my goal going back to Demon Souls it fills a few things. One, it's like a nice closure bit to be going back before the game closes down to play it again on the channel. And have like that like loop around and go back memory down memory, memory lane and everything like that from 2013 when the channel started when this was like one of the first 10 videos I made. Uh, and also part of the central identity of the channel because of how much uh, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Dark Souls videos I've made. But also it's a nice chance to go back to Demon's Souls now that I'm significantly better at the game. When I played Demon's Souls on the channel... At least the, the last two-thirds of it was blind. I don't know what percentage of the beginning part was not blind, but most of it was blind. I had not done it before, but I had beaten Dark Souls, and I but, that, but it was the shitty playthrough of Dark Souls where you limp through it with like a shield and heavy-ass armor and Havel, and like you're just like using every trick you can find to just barely limp through the game as you're trying to figure it out. So I was not good at Souls games yet. I'm admittedly a little out of practice because it's been like eight months now since the last time I played one, and that's freaking me out because I just looked that up today and I didn't realize how long it's been uh but like I, I know so much more now and so I just I just want to I want to play again as my modern me with different commentary and audio setup and more knowledge about how to play these games and I think it'd be a nice way to go back and everything so that'll be interesting and then maybe next I'll upload my already recorded series with Andrew where I tried to tutor him through stuff like Dark Demon Souls and Dark Souls and that was a journey as you might imagine. So I don't have a... Oh no. You can't connect to the servers. Oh, I might need to just go back and make sure that my... That that might not be the servers. That might, I, need, I need to double check to make sure that, that my PlayStation 3 is up to date and everything. We'll, we'll take care of that in a moment. But just to, as an update, uh, I don't have a plan for this series. I'm just gonna go in and play the game. No, not really a gimmick run, no special thing. I'm gonna avoid what my two previous playthroughs. So in 2013, I played as a shield and so, uh, a shield and spear character. And then later that year with Wanderbot when he was visiting, we did a playthrough with magic. So I'm gonna avoid doing a magic run and, or a spear run. Aside from that, I'm just kind of, I'm gonna wing it. It'll be interesting. Now I'll be right back after technical difficulties. Oh no, goodness me, I'm running out of character slots. There's only four character slots in this game, so we're back. Yeah, I need to I need to enter my like login information and also log update my PS3 for the first time in a while. That, all that mess that always gets in the way if you don't pre-check it. I guess I'll delete trophy because his clearly named to indicate that he was made to go hunt trophies. <laughs> uh, it takes a while, huh? Who did I play as? In my previous let's play, I can't even tell you off the top of my head if it was Demi or Callie. I would guess Callie because they're level 68. Perhaps. I know I know Susan is the character I made with freaking Wanderbot, because he's got a fixation on that particular name, and also he's they got they have a nightmare face. So you can tell it was for that joke playthrough and whatnot. Alright. After all that pre yep, there's the warning. After all that preamble, let's get this game started. Oh god, yeah, that's what you'd look like by default. Forgot about that. I have no idea what to name you. Let's just keep going for a bit. And I'll uh, decide as we go. Let's see. 
Soldier's a pretty decent go-to one. I've definitely... Uh, I'm, no, I have no choice. I have to play as a knight. Yeah, I have to. No choice. <laughs> I can't hype up the fluted armor and use it in my freaking banner twice. Both the one that Wander made and the one that the other guy made that I forgot the name of, but my previous banner that looked... That was much cheaper. <laughs> uh, also featured me in fluted armor, and then all the all my all my freaking uh, thumbnails feature me wearing fluted armor. So who cares about what the actual build is? I'm gonna play as the as the class that starts off with fluted armor because I have no choice. As we make this <laughs> these poor character generators. Oh my god. Let's do let's pick our origin first. That kind of affects a lot. Even though, honestly, they all look like... <laughs> no matter who you highlight for the origin part, they all look... They all end up looking like almost the same person because of how little their face changes. I think it's the eyes. It's the blonde eyebrows and blue eyes and, like, the completely unmoving... Like, almost completely unmoving dimensions of them that make it, like, harder to notice that it's even changing. How old can you make your character? I also really get a kick out of the idea that the gender's a slider in this game. Uh, they let, they let, they later changed it to like masculinity, femininity, as opposed to just straight up male, female. But uh, it, it, I think there was like they kind of ended up being like accidentally forward thinking in a way that I think was actually just mostly uh, slightly awkward uh, translation more than anything. <laughs> Do you want to go the full anime hairstyle? Because you can. We need to fix your hair color, it is a problem. I'm never gonna be happy with what this character looks like. I already know that. Can I fix... How do I change your brows to not be stupid? No, these are- these aren't colors. Eyes? Eye size, eye slant. Eye color. Umber to gray. Okay, he looks less like he's sick. When his eye, when he, when he, when he has pupils, instead of being like bright blue, oh, that's that's how you end up with brown and stuff. Interesting. I kind of just want to hit random a lot. Is that is there a random button? Uh, they didn't. They don't give you. A, oh, a random. Wow. <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait. You like <laughs> that worked perfectly <laughs> on the first try. I was like, okay, you ended up actually looking like East now instead of again Goro Girl or something. <laughs> Should I just, you know, you know what? Let's you win. That's that's our character. There we go. <laughs> wow! I hit random once and it turned into a human being all of a sudden. <laughs> that's never happened before. Random's always such a disaster. Yep, that's gonna be better than anything I can get from sliders. All right. Um, shit, I didn't think of a name at all. Uh, shit. There we go. Shinen Khan. Literally a Google Translate into Japanese for for the phrase four years. <laughs> I'm sure it's wrong. Great, let's go. King Aland the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. Valarfax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old king Alant had aroused the old one, the great beast below the nexus from its eternal slumber, and that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls also lose their minds. The mad attack the sane and chaos reigns. 
Valorfax spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors were drawn to the accursed land. But none have returned. Bjor of the Twin Fangs. Yurt the Silent Chief. Sage Urbane. Skurver the Wanderer. The Sixth Saint Astraea and her knight Garl Vinland. And Sage Frake the Visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? Interesting how the intro part straight up has, uh, it's like a film reel that's skipping and it has lines on it, which is like concerning. I'm like, it raises questions like, do they have a film reels in this universe to begin with? It's also like simultaneously really effective and really ineffective at setting up the game. Because on one hand, it's like, Boletaria is a place overtaken by this deep fog. And like, that's that's that all, that's all fine. That's like, yeah, okay. I, setting the stage, the player will remember that. It'll be reinforced almost immediately when you play the game. But then the other part is like, I'm going to name a bunch of NPCs now. And you have no context for what their significance will be. Are they the boss fights? Are they random friends you're going to make? Who knows? And it's like, and they're just dumping those names on you with no context and not even, you don't even get to see what most of them look like and everything. And then like, uh, then they, uh, then you get, you realize what the, your average player's experience is going to be, which is that they're going to get stuck on the first area, just trying to figure out how to play the game. And then they're going to get stuck on Tower Knight and the Dragon Bridge and figuring out how to navigate the world and like so many obstacles obstacles are being in their way that like it's gonna be like 20 hours before they even get a chance to meet these characters you mentioned briefly in an intro with no context so it's like it's just not effective setup I don't think I don't think it works for really anybody I'm gonna play the intro I don't need the demo but I might as well give a go at trying to beat that boss that can like practically one shot you right Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. And I am fat rolling, and we are in glorious, beautiful 720p, at least. I think a 720p. Although I'll still render it in 1080 because it'll look better on YouTube because a 720 video would be scaled down like crazy anyway. Standard attack. This is your swingy swingy sword. Congratulations. By the way, there's a lock on. Oh yeah. How you doing, buddy? Look, I'm a new player in the Souls games. I'm gonna spin until I get the backstab animation. Oh man, it actually does feel weird to be back. I'm trying to figure out. You know what? Let's just do it in in here. This game is fucking loud. 
Gonna mention that really quick. Holy crap. Holy crap, this game's loud. I'll turn the voices up, I guess. It's fine. Make them stand out. I was like, holy crap. I need to fix this, and I'm like searching for like a way to turn it down on my hardware. I haven't had to turn down a game for a while. Did I just start glowing when I walked in here? Oh, yeah. That's interesting. At the moment I go through this threshold, you can see my my light gets way brighter. It's always on my hip because you have like this light gem that they use to... It's interesting. It's, it's an in-universe explanation for why you can see around your character in this game, which I believe they just did away with in every other Souls game. But you just have a gem on your hip that lights up your surroundings, and that's why you can see in the dark, generally. That's basically the reason. And it becomes really important around, you, around the time you get the Tower of Boletaria. I mean, Tower of Latria. Hey there. He's fine, don't worry about him. Just a flesh wound. But yeah, uh, as per usual for Demon Souls and, and even Resident Evil 7 and, and Dark Souls, they have like a... The lighting will often go through modes when you go from room to room. So you, that's why you can see my weapon clearly gets brighter. When I, uh, my uh, gem clearly gets brighter the moment I walk into that next room. When I enter the tunnel area. Like, you, like, it's not just a matter of like, oh, it's dark in here, so the gem's noticeably having larger impact. It's that, uh, it literally changed modes as I went through a threshold, and it was very visible. They did that a lot throughout the franchise. Especially around, like, Blight Town and stuff like that. Like, they would be like, now everything is green! That's the courtyard I'm gonna be in later, where they teach me how to b backstep, I think? Yeah. But you'll, you'll, you'll walk through a door sometimes in Souls games and it'll be like, Now everything's green! Now everything's yellow! Because doing a filter... Doing an active filter on the screen is, is le less resource intensive than actually figuring out how to make each environment... Uh, look that way naturally within the same engine. No! Fellow fluted... Fellow dead fluted nightman. Is that the guy from the cover? That particular pose and being against the wall looks a lot like the really the really good Demon Souls cover, which we unfortunately never got. It's the Japanese cover that looks really cool, and it's just a fluted night guy just full of arrows or something dead against a wall or dying against a wall. We just have a dramatic guy standing in center frame with his back to the camera because that's how every Western cover is. It's always the same thing. It's the Nathan Drake slash uh, Commander Shepard dude standing in the middle of the frame. Uh, and usually they're back to the ca they either have their back to the camera, and they're looking over their shoulder, or they have that power stance where their arms are both slightly fanned out, so there's like a gap between them and their hips, and they look like they're just a dangerous man. Look how dangerous that man is. Ouchie. Mandatory damage. See? You can't say there's no unavoidable damage in Souls games. Boom. Checkmate, f fanboys. <laughs> Wow, I'm not getting backstabs. I need to get used to the what the window was in this game. There it is. Right, you kind of have to rub your body like inside their hitbox a little bit. It became... That, that's a bit of a learning curve from game to game, is re recalibrating where certain boxes work. In Dark Souls 3, you're just like, eh, whatever. I'm behind him, it'll work. <laughs> but back in the OG games... You kind of have to, like, position behind them, then, like, rub inside of their hitbox a little bit and, like, get in there. Then you also have to make sure that you're, like, the wind's blowing in the right direction and you plant your feet so that you don't get, so it doesn't count as, like, a foul because this is an NBA jam. Something, something basketball jokes. I think that's all of them, isn't it? Gotta get used to that joystick. That joystick sensitivity. I haven't used a PS3 in so, so long and I feel weird. Now they're setting up the teleporting, the arch stones. Now that I'm playing Zelda, it is interesting just to like, go back and look at how many similarities there are to some of the design aspects here. 
There's the Z-targeting stuff and everything, but also there's just like the the overabundance of interface elements on the screen. Like you have the health bar and the magic bar in the corner, but then you also have a currency in the corner of the screen that never goes away, which admittedly in Souls games they made way more relevant to your average moment-to-moment -moment gameplay that you have your currency in the screen all the time because you're like, oh, that I need that currency in order to know my souls, and that's constantly a gamble, whereas rupees are kind of like, eh, whatever. Where, like, they could easily just hide the rupees until you get to a store or pause the game or something. But the rupees never get off your goddamn screen. Then there's the D-pad uh, thing in the bottom left corner, which which is reflective of, like, how in, in Zelda there's the constant, like, here's what all of your buttons currently do interface element that they use in basically every game all the way up until basically Breath of the Wild, where they kind of minimized it more. But they also minimized that feature more. Okay, we need to do something important real quick, which is I need to figure out how Equip Burden works. Oh my god. They give you a fluted set that puts you at... Oh my goodness, it gives you nearly a hundred. Oh no. You know what? We're committing to it. Committing to it. I just gotta upgrade that uh, Equip Load. I might sw swap out some of the set's pieces as I get more armor, but I don't really want to run around naked. It'll make that intro cutscene with Pancake Face Lady look really silly. So I gotta keep my armor on, even though it'll probably get me killed against the boss. Wow. Backstabs that are not even lethal. And we're in the pre-Estus Flask world where we have grass that we chew on somehow via... Oh, hi. Ooh, that was effective. Ow. Oh man, I'm so good at parrying you guys, even after all this time. Oh, he's shield bashing me. Oh shit, that was a slow one. I don't know, I can't. I just can't, man. God damn it. I swear to God, one of these days I'll start to figure out parrying, but damn it. <laughs> For all these years, I'm just like, I don't know. Gave it a shot. Man, don't, don't don't you just feel it? Don't you just feel it every time I do it? You're like, oh no, take it off. <laughs> oh wow, that damn that that animation cancel block he just did. Hey you. Hey, buddy. Oh, shit. No, I accidentally... I accidentally ate grass. <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> that must have been... That must have been an assault and sanctuary reflex. To hit... To, to, because I hit square to attack. Which is how you heal in this game. But how you attack in that game? God damn it. I remember at the beginning of this channel, I was in such a gambit to be like, I'm gonna play every From Software game, let's go down this chronicle. And the literally the first game I tried outside of the Souls series... Uh, well, I, I played one of the games before, because I played Enchanted Arms before, which was awful. And I've also played Otagi, I think, at some point, or Tenchu. But uh, I tried playing... Uh, the first thing I tried to do to, to record after I finished Dark Souls and Demon Souls was... I'm like, I'm gonna do Shadow Tower, and I... I was all excited, I bought it from Amazon, it came in the mail, and it had came with this little signed uh, picture of like a, a brother and sister that run some kind of like video game enthusiast shop or something. It was like, leave us a review, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do Shadow Tower, this game looks rad. And then I played Shadow Tower, and I'm like, I, I can't, I can't take it, I can't take it, man. Maybe one of these days I'll go back, but damn, that game was a uh, tough nut to swallow. Although if I did, if I did quit the game and then come back years later to finish it, it would definitely be, uh... It would definitely be tying in with my, uh, how I dealt with Souls games in the first place. I think From Software has a tendency to make games that are hard to stomach the first time around. So who knows, maybe I'll love Shadow Tower one day. But man, is it rough to play a first-person dungeon crawler that, that feels like you're moving through molasses. 
And instead of having anything close to Elder Scrolls controls, it has uh, D-pad controls, and they it, it came out after the, the joysticks were already added to the controller, but it didn't use them for some reason. Like, for some reason, it just doesn't use the joysticks. I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm getting reminded now why I always play the, t the tutorial, even when I know this game. And it's because it gives you items. I don't think you... Do you get those items for free for not playing the tutorial? I don't think you do. Does my shield have 100% block? It's worth checking right before the boss fight. It should have 100%, right? It's the freaking... Yeah, it's the kite shield. It's a good thing to start with. Oh, and I have a mail breaker. And they're both equipped at the same time. Gee, I wonder why I might be a little overburdened. It's, uh... That's not a great idea. <laughs> Let's see. That should affect my weight, doesn't it? Or does it not? Or the mail breaker cost weighs almost nothing is the issue, huh? It's 0.5, or that's 2. Weapons are admittedly kind of light. Last chance to choose to rip off the armor and be all like, Yeah, I can survive this fight because I can roll now. Nope. We're going to look rad and die for it. I can't even roll. Ugh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Yeah, blocking doesn't work. You very much have to roll. You yeah, know, McDeal, I got this. He only takes like 500 hits to kill. We'll be fine. It is remarkable how much he looks like the Asylum Demon. And how much this is going to take 500 years if I'd win. Nope. Oh, you charming, janky game. Die, the Nexus has trapped your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. It's a good thing that they subtitled that part because you couldn't even read. <laughs> you, yeah, you couldn't even hear what she said after the uh, towards the end of the sentence because it faded out. However, by capturing the demon souls, you can reclaim your physical body. Oh yeah, got that half health. Got it going on, man. Oh boy. So playing this right now, it's interesting. Uh, it's easy to accuse them of making the same game over and over again and like thinking they're not putting the work in, but like, man, like, when you go back to Demon's Souls, you can see all the refinement they've made in the future games. Like, there's elements of, like, the, like, locking the camera onto the enemy and, like, strafing around them and, like, how the camera behaves and whether or not you can even keep the enemy in frame and how awkward it gets jammed on things. Like, there's little moments where I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, Demon's Souls had certain issues that were eventually extinguished in future games over time. And, like, that's a, that's an important thing to note. It's interesting. All these characters, I don't remember any of their dialogue. This is almost like a blind playthrough again. Oh my. How has this happened? Has God abandoned us for failing to show proper respect to King Alant? Oh, Mbasa. Oh, Mbasa. 
Umbasa. Umbasa. Which people encountered that word in Bloodborne or in Bloodborne related materials or something. And they're like, oh, they're canonically the same universe. Obviously, we proved it. I'm stockpiled, Thomas. When the scourge came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here, in the Nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. Best of luck to you. Hmm. You're new here? Do you hear for my services? The name's Baldwin. Just an ordinary blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons, or forge ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, huh? Raises questions, right? He can eke out a living. Who is he paying these souls to, exactly? Like, who's... Who is he paying the souls to? Why does he need a living? Is he does he eat food? Do any of the people eat here eat food here? Or are they dead like I am? Where the hell is the Nexus? How does any of this work? Perhaps you've already had, but there's another blacksmith at the entrance of Stonefang Mine. He's an eccentric old man, but he knows his trade well. He's the only sane one left in a town of soul starved men. If you do meet him. Yeah, well, forget it. That stubborn old near the well will just ignore you. There aren't enough blacksmiths in this temple to handle all the work. Only certain ores can be used to forge weapons, but you just have to make do. And be thankful that I'm still of good health. And be thankful. No interest, eh? I can tell you, you're not gonna last long here. Gotta go get stuff first, dude. I don't have things to use. I do like all the little contextual characteristics of the dialogue there, where there's the, uh, they'll say something if you walk away without actually saying goodbye. They'll say something if you, but they'll, they'll also have different goodbyes based on whether or not you bought something from them or just walked away, which is what we just did here. Here's the crestfallen knight, the most reused character, perhaps. He sets the tone. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the art stones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed boletaria. I don't remember if there's somebody out here already or not. No, they're added later, I think. It's interesting that, like... Demon Souls and Dark Souls, like, sort of retroactively became about cycles and infinite looping and stuff like that, and... That's reinforced by characters like the Crestfallen Knight being reused from game to game over and over again. I probably should have read that. Oh well. I can read it later. Boletaria is in trouble. The end. <laughs>